Today we're going to talk about how to conquer your 20s. So I just turned 30 in April and today I'm going to share with you guys the things that I wish someone had told me when I was in my 20s on number one, how to earn more than $10,000 a month to build your dream life. Number two, how to date great men. And number three, how to build your dream body. Hello my lovelies, I'm Laura and welcome or welcome back to the channel where I share my stories about how I glowed up to attract my dream relationship and live my dream life. So there are a lot of videos out there on how to glow up, how to be seductive, how to earn an online income and live your best life. But expectations versus reality, they're sometimes not the same, aren't they? So I watched all of those videos and going through it in my 20s myself, trying to figure it out, I find it was completely different from the stories that people had shared with me. They didn't talk about the frustrations, they didn't talk about all the emotions, they didn't talk about confusion. So those are some of the things that I want to share with you guys today because going through life as a normal human being is rough <laughs> and if anyone could have given me some sort of guide and some sort of roadmap these are all of the pieces of advice that I would have given to my younger self. So point number one on how to earn more than $10,000 a month. Interesting topic and a really surreal one because as a young girl I really struggled with what I wanted to do as most young people do. I wasn't really someone who was like destined to be like a financial analyst, lawyer, doctor, any of those prized occupations and Asian upbringing would fantasize. I basically just sucked at school. Those through heaps of hard work, different jobs, social circles, here basically all the jobs I've ever done. I never thought that this one right here though, the high ticket online sales would be the one that I found most success in. I basically talked to people over video, over phone calls, and I basically helped them with, well one company I helped them with their fitness, the other company I helped people leave their 9 to 5s by learning how to earn an online income. I earned less in real estate than I did with online sales. It's really funny because everyone else told me that I was crazy to leave real estate um, and that it wasn't possible to get a better future with online sales. However, to all the haters, I averaged about 10 to 15k per month with the online sales. I'm not here though to tell you how much I earned, but I want to share with you how to build up a skill set strategically so that you can become someone who can demand that sort of income wherever you go. So being strategic is so important because you only have a finite amount of time in your 20s and when they're gone, they're gone. You're basically left with whatever you've built in your 20s to go into your 30s. And 30s as a woman, I'm assuming that's when you sort of want to settle down, or you want to have kids, there's different priorities in life where it's more, there's more at risk for you to fail. Unless Unless you've got a really supportive partner, unless you guys are really financially stable, then there's a few more things to consider rather than just going to chase your dreams. 30 and thriving is where we want to be at. So in my mind, I had to use this time in my life to absolutely just figure it out, whatever it takes, even if it kills me. But the best thing about what I'm about to share with you guys is that you don't have to start with any particular set of skills. The secret is that you build it up from whatever job you're doing right now. One of the best pieces of advice I think my mom's ever given me is that whatever you do, do your best at it and learn from everyone in every situation as much as you can because when i was working at her face i tried to be the best that i can i tried to be better than everyone else i offered to stay back to learn how to make coffee i stayed back to help make cocktails for free when i worked at my first cafe job holy shit i don't even know how i got the job because i didn't even know the difference between a cappuccino and a flat white and i didn't even know how to serve a tequila shop but now when i left I now had built up a great reputation for a great work ethic. I got great recommendations from my managers. I now could put on my resume, barista and top sales member of the team. And I worked myself into retail jobs, learning more about selling, merchandising, stock tech, basically all the normal jobs that you would do in retail. But the secret was that I aimed to do them better than anyone else. At least I tried. I wanted to be best at stock tech. I wanted to be best at sales because when a stock tech shift came up or when a sales shift came up, guess who they called? When my manager was too busy to order stock, guess who she asked to help? So as I kept going and moving through jobs, I got better and better opportunities. Then I landed myself in my first sales job at a big box gym. So I want to share the whole story with you guys, but basically my performance as I went and my resume as I went helped me land the job. And from there, I landed my big chance in real estate. So look, aside from hard work, this is the real secret of how I cracked my first average 10k month was that I bought a course. I bought a $15,000 course 
course to really teach me exactly what I needed to make sales online, which is this job right here. Because I really wanted to start working from home and I mean, yes, learning from your peers is so important because there's nothing really that can replace real life experience. But it takes so long and it really depends who's teaching you, how good they are at teaching and how quickly you can implement these things. And sometimes sales is a really ambiguous thing or whatever other skills that you're trying to learn, it can be quite ambiguous. I recommend going for a course because through my experience, it was structured. I know that thousands of other people had gone through this course, had great results and learned a great skill, were able to land jobs. And so in three months, I was able to learn more in the course than I did in two years in real estate about selling. So now I knew how to sell online technically got a certification on how to sell and talk to people. Um, so now I was qualified to apply for online sales jobs. I will say that the reason why I'm so passionate about sharing my course experience with you guys is because I wanted to learn from everyone. But sometimes I really struggle because although some of my mentors in real life, they were really good at what they did, they weren't that great at teaching me the skills though. Some people are just better at doing rather than teaching. So I mean, if you've got a great mentor out there, 100% go for it, learn from them, learn everything that you can, try and be the best at what you can do. Otherwise, if you don't, if you want a specific skill, if you're interested in getting into a specific industry, the best way is just to save up your money and go for a course. Find one that's got heaps of reviews, has been around for a really long time, and they've got heaps of students who've actually successfully finished the course and been able to get themselves employed or get into the next step of whatever you want to get into successfully. Because through selling online, I can tell you there are lots of dodgy online sales gurus or online gurus out there. So make sure you find one with a great track record, got heaps of reviews, these are great reviews, um, and it's been around for a long time. Something to remember though, when you're trying to level yourself up and go above and beyond, uh, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to try say to you that this is not worth it. This is going to start telling you to just chill. Why are you stressing? Oh my God, that's a lot of money to spend on a course. No, it's not called spending. It's called investing in yourself. You are investing in a skill that will provide more opportunity for you to earn even more. Now, looking back, I would obviously tell myself, don't listen to the haters. But back then, it was really hard because I didn't have proof of concept that this would work yet. So for what it's worth, if you're going through your own journey and trying to figure things out, trying to level up, and you're getting a bit of negative chatter in the background, there's two things I want you to take away from this. Number one, if there is something that you want to do, go freaking try it. Money will come back, but your time will not. And if something didn't work out, don't stop trying. Try to understand what went wrong, why it went wrong, and when you make your next decision again, make smarter decisions and don't make the same mistakes. Because at the end of the day, you know what happened to all of those people who told me it was silly to put myself out there? and that I should just play it safe. They're still working where they've always been working, hating life, complaining about their situation. Number two, get a mentor. Find someone who's willing to teach you the ropes or get a course. Do not go for the get rich quick type courses. Follow the ones that actually teach you a skill set because when you get really good at something, money follows. Number two, dating great men. Okay, what I'm about to say is a little bit controversial, but it's the magic that's made the life that I have now possible. Don't date for validation and companionship, date for opportunity. Because I moved to a different country, I did not have an existing social circle or a valuable network yet. Dating great men gave me access to their circle of friends and networks via proximity. My ex I met from the first cafe I worked at gave me opportunities to retail stores I would have never been able to get my foot into. My fiance now, I got that real estate gig from some of his good friends who are now my good friends. Yes, I worked really hard, but I would not be where I am right now without an amazing network of amazing people. Being independent is great, but there is no shame in wanting to be part of a circle of better people who are close to you, who can inspire you to be more. I talk a lot about attracting quality relationship ready men on my channel because when I met Pat through Tinder, I was just there to find myself. But I ended up meeting a man who really, really inspired me in every sense of the word. He was more ahead in life than I was. And I looked up to him so much and I still do. He had more discipline than I did. He was more knowledgeable about money than I was. He was such a wonderful person. He was such a wonderful human being that I inspired to be like him. So when I have a bad day and I am wallowing in my own pity, he is the one that believes in me more than I can believe in myself sometimes. He is the one who encourages me to make big moves. The one who I feel safe coming home to just as I am. The one who we work hard and we play even harder together. I truly 
really believe that alone we go fast, but together we go further. The energy and support I have in my life right now is the type that I've only dreamed of as a young girl. And I wish that for every young lady out there who is busting her ass, giving it her all. Girl, if you think you can go far alone, you will go so much further when you have the support to heal, to feel safe, and to know that you're not in it alone. I know there are a lot of people out there preaching the single life, and I'm all for that. You have to learn how to be independent and happy on your own feet first. However, you do not have to be fully healed and you're ult the ultimate version of yourself to be in a good relationship. It's really difficult for a woman to fully step into her feminine and unlock all her grace, creativity, beauty, if she's still got to do everything herself. We'll talk about how to know if he's the right one in another video. Maybe we could make that the next video. Anyway, so if you're in your 20s, don't just settle for any men. Keep seeking, keep learning how to attract great men and start to learn and know what a good man looks like so that when you see one, you have the best chances of grasping that opportunity. Because boy, when I was in a toxic relationship, it was so much harder to move forward in life or at all. Number three, build your dream body. Okay, so another controversial statement. I feel okay saying this because I've battled body insecurities all my life and I've come out on the other side now. So what I want to say is that if you feel like you're not hot or if you want to look better, that is okay. I felt so much shame about not liking my body because people were telling me to love the way that I look even though if I didn't like it. It's like trying to tell me to like an outfit that I don't like. I'm just not feeling myself. I want to get into something that I feel hot in, that I feel good in. Like I, when I wear it, I feel like I can slay. So I did not hate my body. I just did not like my fat and muscle ratio and how it was proportioned around my body. So I would describe my natural body shape as a wide square. In my body here, I had cardio and I had dieted myself into a weaker metabolism. But here, I lifted heavier weights, I got more steps in in my day, I made better choices with my food, but I was eating much more as well and I loved my body much more. I mean, just like leveling up everywhere else in life, you can level up your body too. So look, here's the secret. Through all of my reading and trying things out myself, I now know that having more muscle does not make me bulk but it's going to increase my metabolism which means I can have more food and if I want bigger shoulders I can build bigger shoulders if I want a bigger bum I can build a bigger bum if I want an hourglass shape I need to work on my upper body and my lower body so my waist can look snatched in proportion but all of that didn't come free I had to figure all of this out myself diet after diet run after run I tried every high intensity workout there is out there only to realize those things are not sustainable anything that promises you massive results in the short amount of time is not sustainable because how long can I be on a diet for? The minute I stop being on a diet, I blow up again. The minute I stop running, I blow up again. So how is that sustainable? So a crash course on what I will teach myself. Three things. Number one, activity. Walk six to eight thousand steps per day. Learn how to build muscle because that's the stuff that increases your metabolism long term. Number two, focus on protein intake. That's the stuff that keeps you fuller for longer. And number three, read and learn about how to find other ways of coping with stress aside from eating. I think one and two are pretty self-explanatory. But number three, I once told a friend like, oh, you know, I'm a little bit fluffy because I've got an eat, I've got an eating problem. I eat when I'm happy. I eat when I'm sad. I eat when I'm stressed. And she just genuinely said, like, Laura, I don't think you've got an eating problem. Maybe you have a stress problem of how you cope with stress. Since then, I've just been more aware and have learned more ways of coping with stress aside from just binge eating or just like eating my emotions away. It's not that I don't stress or sad eat anymore, that would be a lie, but I found alternative ways and that's not the only way that I cope with stress now, so I do it much less. And whenever I need to get snatched for an event or whatever it might be, I can do that or I could not do that. I'm just pretty happy with my baseline at the moment. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this more chill out session where I just share my honest life experiences with you guys. If you guys did, make sure to let me know in the comments. Otherwise, next video we're going to talk about how to actually know if he's the wrong guy. Um, shout out to Kathy Nguyen 1843. She left a comment in one of my previous videos about how I almost married the wrong man. She left the video and I'm really happy to hear that, but she wanted a little bit more of a step-by-step -step approach on how to know if he's actually not the one. Because sometimes when you're in a relationship, someone's not all bad that you can leave immediately. They've got good in them, they've got bad in them, but you're like, you've got this gut feeling where I don't know if he's the one, if we should continue the relationship. It's been X amount of years. Should I start over? It sucks to be single. 
handle all of those things. I mean, I definitely been through that. I almost married the wrong guy. So if you're keen, make sure you subscribe to know when that comes out. I'll see you guys there.